Hi, I'm Tatsu with Tatsu, Li uh, Tatsu RP Live. Coming to you just after the heels of a two speeches by Bernie Sanders and Hillary Clinton. So I thought we'd just take the time tonight to talk about those two speeches. And it would be remiss to me uh, of me to sit not mention Bernie's speech last night in front of the White House regarding DAPL. Um, it was a great, great speech, the old Bernie that we're used to, and I, you know, if, if you haven't checked it out, it's right here in the description, and you can uh, view for yourself, uh, you know, the only guy who's talking about DAPL is Bernie, of course Jill Stein was out there throughout the campaign and faced, faced criminal charges for trespassing and uh, the vandalism, destruction of property. So, I think I thought it was great that Bernie got back out there. Uh, it's an important issue. It, it's a unifying issue for everyone on the left, no matter what your position is about the election, the outcomes, uh, where we need to go. I think that everyone can rally around Dapple. So. Um, thanks, Adolfo. <laughs> I'm here for you. Now, Bernie also talked just before Hillary tonight, and I just wanted to give you some of the talking points he came up with, and it's very interesting. Uh, instead of leading in with an excoriation or de denunciation of Donald Trump's positions uh, throughout the campaign, the rhetoric, uh, Bernie has actually been paying attention to the policies that Trump has proposed. And this is not something we've seen from the media, unfortunately. It's very ironic that we have one of the candidates for president telling us the news after the fact. And what he, what he says is we need major, major reform of the Democratic Party. Now, he did not talk about Chuck Schumer or his own role in the new leadership uh, positions. Bernie will be occupying the outreach coordination. Now, obviously the, the DNC and the Democratic Party do need to be reformed, and we'll, we'll talk about that at the end. We are the media, yes we are. So, and yes, Keith Ellison We'll talk about him too. Now, getting to what Bernie talked about, about Donald Trump, Donald Trump says he will not cut Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid. And then he goes on, no, I would like to expand Medicare and Medicaid. And then, he's, you know, Donald Trump says he wants a trillion dollars for infrastructure, which is pretty similar to what Bernie wanted. And if you remember, Hillary wanted something like 250 billion a quarter of quarter of the amount so yeah uh, Rebecca points out here that president-elect has some good policy that is very similar to some Bernie's that's exactly right and that's you know I'm here stating the obvious just repeating Bernie's talking points because the media won't do it right um, the media has failed to do its job uh, the very fundamentals of their you know the merits of, of what they say fail on their own um, words. So now, so he's Trump is advocating ten dollars an hour minimum wage. Um, Bernie says it's not fifteen dollars an hour, but that's a step in the right direction. Good old Bernie. And uh, this is big, Donald. You know. I missed this actually myself, uh, and Donald Trump said this in October, I believe, around the sixth. And Donald Trump wants to reestablish Glass Steagall. And for those of you not familiar, I, I doubt very many many of you are not. But Glass Steagall is the separation of commercial banking from personal savings and loans. And you know, people say it's an outdated law, but no, it's it's still as relevant today as it ever was. And now, 
Trump wants six weeks of family leave. Uh, Bernie again says, no, let me say that in Europe, you know, we have 12 weeks. But it's a step in the right direction. And he's right. Uh, I'm, I'm, I don't remember Clinton coming out with a statement. I'm, I'm probably wrong. I didn't read up on her policy statements um, more than two or three times throughout the election. But uh, this is good. It's all a step in the right direction. Mr. Trump says he wants to defeat the disastrous trade policies. And we will work with him. The Democrats will work with him. And that's... It's great. I mean, need need we remind you, viewers, that Donald Trump has defeated TPP single-handedly before even stepping into the White House. Sixty-four days into uh, before getting into the White House, he has. Uh, yeah, he's relegated TPP to uh, the dustbin of history. I mean, not not really. I'm exaggerating in that. You should also know that. After, after the Senate Democrats and Obama dropped it, uh, other countries uh, in Latin America, China, says, "Well, we'll just we'll just figure out our own TPP without the United States if they don't want to play ball." So, although we are the economic superpower in the world, um, there might be some pressure from the other empires of the world, if you were. Uh, to pressure us into TPP. So Donald Trump can't do this by himself, and neither can we. So we, we have to... It, it's unfortunate that, uh, you know, the recriminations of the election have led people to denounce everything that Donald Trump has done and said uh, throughout this, this campaign, and they're still, you know, wishing just as hopelessly as we did at one point that our guy will be elected and that Hillary will be elected by the Electoral College but if we were if we are to really defeat TPP and the more destructive trade policies down the road which Bernie doesn't even mention like T TISA then we need more than Donald Trump we need we need we need us, right? We're the revolution we've been waiting for. Uh, we're the ones we're, we've been waiting for, as Jill Stein says. And, you know, it's it's going to be have to be almost an international movement where <clears throat> where we, uh, progressives in the United States, and even, yes, working class, middle class, conservative and liberal alike, uh, band together to say no. To T T I S A, uh, T P A, T P P, and and so on. T T P A. I mean, there's so many of them. Um, it's crazy. And then we're gonna have to reach out. Um, you know, we here at Young Progressives, uh, sorry, Young Real Progressives, are trying to organize and help help build the coalition we need to fight uh, these. The, the huge power structures that exist here in the United States. But, and, um, you know, some of us were talking tonight, how, you know, how RP is going to move forward. And we're really excited to let you know as those, those things transpire. But I can already, I can already see um, the need for an international RP, if you will, or like-minded organizations that, uh, we we show solidarity for for their trade unions and uh, wherever they may be, uh, Poland or Slo um, European Eastern Bloc countries, uh, Latin America, um, which according to Norm Chomsky, uh, recently um, have somehow managed to pull themselves away from the colonial. Uh, dictatorial, authoritarian, corporatist power structures in the United States. And, <clears throat> you know, there's some crackdown. If you look at Brazil, um, the, 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 the woman president, you know, being impeached um, is basically a blowback from <laughs> the corruption she's trying to fight. Uh, we have 
you know but we have some hope we have some we have some countries down in Latin America who are winning the battle um, they are further along in their struggle than we are so I hope we can all you know learn from those countries and also um, build bridges you know between them right all right so, so I'm sorry that was a bit of a sidetrack but <clears throat> wanted you know to give you a little more than just the recitations of, of these speeches now <clears throat> so and then you know he gave everyone you know attending the I would term it red meat that people are looking for and yeah and he said yes you know if Donald Trump what, what, what we will not support is the bigotry sexism and racism and the crowd went wild and yeah, I, I believe that was the largest cheer of that 18-minute speech. And uh, that's what people want to hear, you know. It's like, yeah, let's uh, bash the bad guy, you know, Trump, right? And then we move on to Clinton's speech, which was, uh, ironically, you know, I, I, I'm a, obviously one of the most, I was one of the first never Hillary people out there and <clears throat> I have to admit that this was on an emotional level she connected she really did you know towards the end um, if she had been this person on the campaign trail she might have had a chance you know um, it was almost the real Hillary it's a Hillary that I've never seen um, you know, just just looking like her normal self, uh, the hair not in a crazy do, just you know whatever she does every day, and <clears throat> so she goes out there after a glowing um, bio review from Madeline Edelson Edelman, and uh, who was her boss, and I you know I learned more about her past through the CDF. I I was under the impression she that she was only a three-month intern in uh, Fall River, Massachusetts, working out of Cambridge. And, you know, there was more. She was an intern before that. She, <clears throat> of course, we, know, we all know that she sat on the board prior to, as, as First Lady of Arkansas. And then she stepped down as she took, uh, entered the White House as First Lady there. And... Um, Deanne says, just another fake side of Hillary. Well, yeah, I mean, they skip over the bad stuff. Uh, they skip over, you know, their, the tremendous, um, disastrous, almost, destruction of their personal relationship over the omnibus, uh, crime bill and, and also the, the welfare reform that the Clintons introduced in the 90s, which, you know, did in fact throw... Uh, two two point six million people off of welfare, including one point three million children. Um, you know, I guess they patched up those differences. Um, and what a what a better night to do it on the CDF's annual fundraiser, right? So I guess you're gonna bury the hatchet when there's fundraising to be done nonprofit or or not you know for children or for not this this is an opportunity right for for cdf to get some get some fundraising going now the clips are in the description as always um you know she urged she urged supporters to stay engaged uh she didn't talk about any of the issues unlike sanders she did not denounce donald trump she called on a you know, broad consensus on child care and family leave, which Donald Trump is starting to do. Um, she, she, <laughs> she name dropped MLK again, uh, bending the arc of the moral universe towards justice. And, you know, I, mm, it kind of gets me a little bit when she does it, but she, she didn't really abuse it too much tonight. So, um, 
and then she referenced her own um <laughs> she referenced her own 1969 commencement speech at at wellesley uh, making the impossible possible is what she said as a young uh college graduate speaking you know the first the first student to deliver a commencement address at wellesley as all the uh, Pantsuit Nation people know, and and then uh, towards the very end, um, and just about that, um, <clears throat> making the impossible possible. Uh, that was one of the talking points of the PBS Frontline documentary, The Choice, twenty sixteen, and they made um, a very sardonic comment um, throughout where you know they, they did show her um references to that speech at Wellesley in 1969 and then they go through her career through several clips and they 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 find they they and their analysis is that Hillary Clinton is a person as a politician who does not see uh, possibilities in the impossible she she sees everything as impossible and you know that's how she became the incrementalist that we've known her to be throughout her career so again although it's you know she might have been the best and brightest of us in 1969 but a life's career is is um judged upon its works and i don't think she I just don't think uh, she deserves a lot of the credit that she gives herself for. So I'm sorry, you know. Now, the emotional part, she spoke about her mother and how she was forced at a very young age, I forget how old, you know, eight or something, and then she had her mother, had to take care of her sister, um, and they took a train or something and relocated out to California. And she gave this imagery of her mother, um, who she said, you know, she thinks of it every day. And this, this, this little bit at the end was even better than uh, the stories that she told at the DNC National Convention. Um, it was, yeah, the, the, the imagery, you know, the imagery of Hillary imagining herself this is almost lyric, uh, literary, uh, imagining herself being on that train, watching, observing her mother, um, taking care of her young, vulnerable sister and herself um, on a road to nowhere, on a train to nowhere. And then she, she gave this sort of ghost-like story where she wanted to tell that young girl that her that she was going to have a family and that that girl was going to grow up and <clears throat> and become a state uh united states senator represent the united states as secretary of state and one day uh gather 62 million votes as for president of the united states and you could see her almost get kind of teary-eyed um it's the best piece that she has ever delivered. Why didn't she do this for herself before? I don't know. But, all right. So I'm going to finish up with a little bit on um, ourrevolution.com. And you'll notice that Hillary is an infamous person who wants to war. Yes, I agree. I'm just going to go through a little bit of comments. Henry Kissinger, Goldwater Girl. Wasn't she Republican? Yeah. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm sort of speaking in, uh, allegorical terms and the, the imagery, you know, not, not exactly the narrative, but I'm getting to the personalities here of, of these people, which I don't like to do, but since the election is over, it's, it's sort of useful to, to review what they say now after the campaign and, compare that to what they said during the campaign to try and get a better picture of like the core principles of these who these people are and on on this level what Hillary said tonight I think it does make her a more sympathetic person um, 
and also I think um, I was I was just thinking about because I'm moving on to ourrevolution.com and Chuck Schumer and maybe I'll start off with Chuck Schumer and give you my take on um, an event that tri transpired uh, the day after the last debate and Chuck Schumer as you know has assumed power in Senate he is now the Senate Minority Leader uh, he has appointed his staff you know his leadership council which does include Bernie in a in a small role the the outreach role you know it's like yes be our sheep dog go out and fetch us more votes please and I I find it insulting um, I don't know how Bernie can stand it being in the in the Democratic uh, leadership and being caucusing with these crooks. Um, as you you know, I there's many articles out on Chuck Schumer now. Um, his positions on being a water boy for Wall Street, to supporting wars, Patriot Act, and and giving Anthony Weiner his start in politics. Um, also. We have, uh, I remember Chuck being on the dais of, dais of the Al Smith Catholic uh, dinner a day after the, the debate, the last debate. And I, I really enjoyed that one. Um, Trump really got in some dingers. <laughs> and it's just, the, the, the dais was very impressive. You had... The entire New York power elite in one one small area. Um, I just could not helping that. Wow, I'm looking. I'm looking at the people who control New York City and most of our country's uh, destiny. Um, Henry Kissinger, Chuck Schumer, uh, Mayor Mayor Dinkins, Mayor De Blasio, Giuliani. Uh, all of these characters were there, and it's just um, wow. It's just like if these people just stepped away from power, we'd be in a much better off situation. Um, all right, so I should woo swipe. Bernie is a secure man. Yes, he's a very secure man. He played his cards correctly. Um, he. I did. I did see an interesting article where Bernie did the. This person's opinion is that he did the right thing by endorsing Hillary after his loss because he made sure no matter what happened, if Hillary won or Hillary lost, that he'd be in a position to uh, fight the agendas of either candidate, either either president elects. So. Uh, and Carl writes, neoliberals are bought and sold for the oligarchy. Um, yes, they are. All right. So, Schumer is a Wall Street puppet. Absolutely. So, okay. Not a lot of love for Hillary tonight. And, yeah, I got I to gotta chuckle a little bit when I'm watching Hillary's live stream. And you just see those angry, angries, angries <laughs> rolling across the screen, even even now. Um, all right, so I'm, time to close out with um, questioning questioningourrevolution.com. And if you remember, Bernie promised after his his um, failure to get the nomination that he would start a grassroots movement. And a website was spun up. It's called OurRevolution.com. They promised to support any candidate who ran on progressive principles. And we, um, I haven't looked at it since then, quite honestly. You know, there's, you know, like, you know, 7,000 people signed up. They, um, but it's, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm quite honestly shocked what, what has happened, what has transpired. And, you know, we, you can't keep track of everything during elections, so that one kind of went by the wayside by a lot of us, including myself. 
I don't trust our revolution. And, and well, you shouldn't. So our revolution, um, number one, we, they don't allow anybody but Democrats. So that, that's for me, you know, that's a non-starter. Um, our revolution shouldn't be about party politics. It shouldn't be about trying to save the Democratic Party, the oldest political party in history. The oldest, um, yeah, the oldest political party in history. Still, still extant, you know. Um, maybe, maybe it's possible that they've outlived their usefulness. And, you know, something should take its place instead of trying to reform it. So while I am very proud of, you know, what Bernie has done uh, in terms of consciousness raising, uh, that is not a movement. Uh, th there's no such thing as a Bernie movement, okay? There's just, uh, he's, he's a popular figure. He hasn't, <clears throat> has he actually channeled the people's energy to protest in the street? Uh, he joins the protests when they happen, but he's not, he's not our leader. Um, he's still a politician in the end. Um, that's that's my analysis, and while some people won't like to hear that, that's the reality. If if you're just a fan of Bernie Sanders and think that he will take care of things, you're, um, you know, you're just as bad as as the um, any Hillary supporter who thought that if Hillary would won, would have won, that she would have taken care of everything. No, it, it really is on our shoulders. You know, we lead. Exactly right, Deanne. Um, we lead. We are, we are the ones that we've been waiting for. And and so, Bernie, um, the Bernie moment is has passed. Uh, he will be a check, a guard against the you know idiocy of a Trump uh, administration, and he will sound the warning bells. But it is up to us to to be in the streets to call our legislators and um, we're seeing some of that but uh, a lot of it's wrong-headed you know it's like i support my legislators position to stop steve bannon and so forth um, without it having even researched the, the the least you know haven't they haven't even done two web searches on, on steve bannon and who he is before you know by drinking the kool-aid so it's like, I don't know. <laughs> People used to drink the Kool-Aid. Now it seems like they make it, mix it for themselves and slug it down every morning. Now, our revolution... Okay, so we've talked about that they don't uh, support third-party candidates. That's a no-no, a bozo no-no, a non-starter. Now, <clears throat> they also got co-opted pretty quickly by Jeff Weaver. And... You know, it's it's probably Jeff Weaver who said, "Yeah, we're going to have this policy. We're not going to support any third-party candidates." Sorry, and he made it pretty much Jeff Weaver's platform, right? And we had a lot of resignations from initial people who founded it. Um, what about this open threat by him to run in 2020? Uh, Bernie's? I'm not sure. Yeah, no one's. Yeah, Bernie, Jeff, Jeff Weaver turned, he turned on us. Um, yeah, he is simply content with the crumbs, sad but true. Well, yeah, I mean, Sandy, I, um, he's a, like you said, he's a guy that's going to make a living. He's a politician. Um, and we know, you know, he can't, he can't change, uh, Washington from the inside. He can tell us, you know, he can point us in the right direction and he'll take the credit for introducing the legislation if it's popular enough to get passed in, uh, in government. But it's our, it's, yes, ben, Steve Bannon did used to work for Goldman Sachs. This is true. Now, um, <clears throat> keep losing my train of thought, answering questions, but now... Steve Bannon, Bernie, our revolution. Okay. So our revolution, um, 
also, you know, I was talking to some some RP peeps tonight, and they point out a couple of things to me. One, they they ran a truly bad candidate in Virginia this year, and so they don't they don't they don't you know first they require Democrats only, and they don't even vet them. So this is more and more looking like just another. It's actually looking like D son of the DNC essentially. Um, so, son of the DNC, down ballot ed edition, right? Uh, it's ridiculous. I mean, come on. And it's it's basically turning into a super PAC. That's the other observation someone gave me. Um, they're they're claiming to be the real rev <clears throat> revolution, your revolution, our revolution. Um, they, if you scroll down. They even have the $27 mark in, in which you can contribute in. So not only did Jeff Weaver steal Bernie's moment from him, he's co-opted his language, his, uh, his antics, you know, his, his charisma, and, and dressed it up in this very professional looking website with um, co-opting, you know, stars like Shaning Woolley, Who's at you know the the Hollywood actress who's out there protesting a dapple? She her name's on the on the on the line as uh, a director or founder or whatever. So yeah, beware of the ourrevolution.com. It's a panacea. It's um, it's worse than a panacea. It's um, it's Kool Aid. You know it. Son son of the DNC down ballot edition. That's what I'm going to be calling it from now on. So, we um, now I'm not saying we here at RP have uh, an antidote to that, but you know we're just we're getting started. Uh, we, we don't really have a lot of funds, and you know we're just here trying to spread truth, um, so so that you know what you're up against at least, and you know the right the right people will come uh, in time. Um, I hope. Um, yeah, I think I think your best move, our best move, is to protest our revolution. dot com. So call them out for what they are. Son of the DNC, down valid edition. Do you guys like that? All right. So that's what I got for not for tonight. And boycott. I like it. So that's what I got. Um, thanks for hanging in. It's really late on the East Coast, and. I'm excited for things to come. So, all right, guys, peace out. Good night, and uh, keep keep hope alive. Don't despair. You got this.